So we'll look at one last model for the rate of disease spread. Um, this one here um, might remind you of the logistic equation, and in fact, that's exactly what it is. It's the logistic equation where the carrying capacity is one, right, when, when the proportion hits the full population. Um, so this is another one that we, we've already solved. We've seen how to solve this one before. We get something that looks like this. The proportion of the population as a function of t will look like 1 over 1 plus some constant b e to the minus kt, right? And we can, we can take given data and we can fit it to this to figure out the values for b and k, right? Um, so the, the data that the textbook uses for all three versions of this model are that um, p of 0 is 0 0.05, so 5% 5 is initially infected. Um, and then I think it's p of 1. I might have the wrong value here. But after a certain amount of time, the proportion hits 0 0.1, so 10%. Um, and so using, using that information in all of these examples, you can figure out, you know, k, in this case b, in this case you'd figure out c, in this case you'd figure out p naught. Um, and you can look at the results and you can pair them and see which one seems to make more sense. Um, so the interesting thing about the, the logistical equation is that um, if you start with a small proportion of the population affected, um, then, then this value is close to 1 and you have something which is very similar to the exponential growth equation, right? Um, and if you reach a point where, where a large fraction of the population is, is infected, um, then, well, this is now getting, it's getting closer to 0, right? But this is getting closer to 1. Um, and so you actually have something that looks kind of like that, right? Um, so it's something that maybe captures both of these models in different places, right, for different values of, of p. Um, the textbook has some nice graphs sort of illustrating and, you know, how things compare, right? And you find that um, for small values of t, beginning with a small initial infected population, um, the graph that you get when you plot this curve here is very close to this one, right? Um, for, for larger values of t, you get something where it fits a little bit better with this one, right? It kind of aligns with either model in different places. Um, now, which one is best? Probably depends on, on more sophisticated data fitting, right? I mean, you probably would need more than two data points to decide which one works. Because, of course, I mean, any of these models can be made to fit two data points. What about if you have 200 data points or 2,000 data points and you're trying to fit the model? Well, then we can start looking to see which one of these actually makes sense or possibly none of them make sense and you have to go to more sophisticated models, right? Um, so in each of these, right, given enough data, you plug the numbers in, you determine the constants, you compare the actual curve that you have from your data with the curves that are generated by these models and you see whether any of them actually make sense for the situation that you're looking at.